Hello everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in tonight to Hot House Global. The collective project is created and produced by a team of people who have come together to provide cultural programming and a resource for social justice activism. Our team is me, Marguerite Horberg, David Offenberg, Edward Wilkerson Jr., Jonathan Woods, Dushan Mosley, Luis Che John, Bea Cabrera, and Vedran Rasibigovic. Our collective is volunteering to present this work so that money can be raised to support musicians adversely affected during this health and economic crisis. You should find donation links on the Twitch channel page and Hot House website. P please contribute to the performers and to Hot House so that we may sustain the project through donations and community support and not impose any barriers to participation. One goal of this project is to provide greater access to the arts and to present cultural voices that are not typically found on commercial stations. These are live events and as such have a few rough edges as the technology is being developed. If the feed drops, please stand by as it will likely begin again shortly. Please spread the word. You can watch Hot House Global on Twitch TV, Streamlabs, YouTube, and the Hot House website. You can also start your own watch party on Facebook by sharing the live feed with your friends. Please also chat, comment, and donate. We hope you will give us your feedback and let's grow together. Program information about the events on the station and other projects organized by our nonprofit organization Hot House are detailed on our website hothouse.net. If you would like to host or curate a program, kindly drop us a line at hothouse3.0 at gmail.com. Thank you for being the most important part of Hot House Global. Please sit back. Enjoy the show, and we should start the stream very shortly. Thank you. Hello, everybody. This is Tatsuaoki from Asian Improv Arts Midwest. And um, thank you, Hot House Global. And thank you, Marguerite and all the staff at the Hot House. This is our volume episode five of the Hot House Global. We've been um, broadcasting a lot of our programs uh, by ourselves as well as um, uh, collaboration with the Hot House Global. And this is a really, really great experience for us. Um, we've learned so much uh, from uh, Hot House Global staff members. And I would like to um, extend uh, thank you to Hot House Global. Um, I think in, in many ways, if it wasn't for Hot House Global to give us an opportunity to broadcast our programming a uh, long time ago, it's been about four months ago, and uh, we, uh, we didn't really come this close to our current status uh, because we are um, broadcasting weekly on our programs and, and being able to do larger show and extended uh, performances and whatnot. And thank you, Hot House, and thank you for joining us. Um, today, we're going to be um, focusing on one of our drumming programs, Tsukasa Taiko. And uh, this has been almost 25 years of Tsukasa Taiko uh, since it's, uh, you know, um, since its beginning. Um, and so we want to kind of go back in the history and talk about um, what's very, very special about the Tsukasa Taiko. Uh, so story goes back to uh, 1996 and seven. So I'm going to bring a current uh, leaders, uh, most recent leaders of the Tsukasa Taiko group on the screen and we can have a conversation together now. And here is Kiyomi Negi Tran in Kyoto Aoki. There we go. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Thank Great. you for having us. Thank you. Um, so these two, Kiyomi and Kyoto, are uh, current leaders of the 
program, Tsukasa Taiko program. And uh, um, this is the third generation leaders uh, on our organization since it started back in 1996, 1997. Um, so I want to briefly go to the, the historical kind of uh, um, key points. So 1996, uh, around that time, I was uh, looking for the taiko drumming to kind of accompany with my ensemble. And I met a variety of people, uh, then started to talking to, at the time, the uh, uh, taiko players of the community. And Tsukasa Taiko was one of the newest taiko group back mm -hmm. in you know, late 1990s, we, because we already had MBT Taiko at the Midwest Buddhist Temple, and we also had a BTC, uh, Kokyo Taiko, which has been a long time, and also our classical dance program today, Fujimaru of Chicago was there way before we started Tsukasa Taiko in the 90s. Um, so uh, the origin was with the uh, Shiyu Sensei uh, of a uh, Wakayagi uh, in Chicago, the dance group, and because we had a Fujimaru and Wakayagi there. And uh, uh, Shiyu Sensei started to do this training with uh, their her own dance company and brought in little Taiko there. And I used to work for Shiyu Sensei's husband, Uchimoto-san, uh, and also his friend, Mr. Sugano and I did the uh, Japanese language teaching at the Buddhist temple and in, did all this. And they had a travel agency. There's an import company. So I met uh, Wakayagi uh, Shiukai, uh, Shiu Sensei's troupe, and there was a taiko. And I was introduced to some of the taiko players there at the time. So first the taiko person I met was John Sagami and Paddy Adachi. Uh, then Hide came along because Hide Yoshihashi was uh, one of the uh, students lived in uh, Shio Sensei's house, and he uh, kind of inherited the Taiko program at the time. I think it was a, called used to be called Wakadaiko. It was with uh, John Sagami and Hide and some other people kind of started that, and Hide wanted to make his own Taiko group under. Wakayagi Sensei's basement and uh, took the character of Shiyu Sensei's Shi, which is a Tsukasa, Kanji Tsukasa, and named it Tsukasa Taiko. And that's when I kind of started to communicate with the Hide and my other music ensemble got together. And we started to work together. And my kids and uh, Negi, so Aoki family and Negi family started to come into Tsukasa Taiko. So that was the origin of the Tsukasa Taiko along with Nitahara family and Hidaka family. So it's basically four family started the Tsukasa Taiko in the basement of Shio Sensei's uh, house back then, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Then all the way to the, the evolution of the Tsukasa Taiko a small group kind of uh, uh, decided to become a little bit the bigger organization in 2001. And we moved Hide's Taiko group from the basement to Japanese American Service Committee. You know, then, then we had a bigger dojo there. And that's really the starting point of the real Tsukasa Taiko to that. Uh, mm -hmm. Then there was a, you know, because of my new music project, there was a, uh, Jason Matsumoto and Ryan Tamburi, who were already part of the MBT, also collaborated with Tsukasa Taiko. Then a little later, Amy Homa came. Uh, so Hide and Amy was the first to set of the Tsukasa Taiko leadership, and mm -hmm. I think you two are small still. Yeah, I was a yeah. teenager. Yeah. Um, Kyoto was probably like, like under 10. Right, right. Um, so yeah, be, like before Tsukasa Taiko, I think I, we were doing again, uh, mm -hmm. you know, our, our little, little brother at four years and we were putting him on a stage to do this improvised Taiko drum. Right? Yeah. And, yeah. So that was a before even we went to the basement. For the right, right. Right. Yeah. Um, so 2001, 
Hide and I decided that the organization has to be a little bit bigger because Hide wanted to have a bigger type of group in, in, the, in the community. And at the time, this was a uh, only Taiko group, private Taiko group, group in Chicago, that you didn't have to be part of the Buddhist temple members, you know, back then in the 1990s, late 90s. And today, I think all the Taiko groups that anybody could join, but back then you had to be a member of the Buddhist temple to be the Buddhist temple Taiko group. Um, so 2000, uh, uh, 1997 or 8, Hide officially made a Tsukasa Taiko. Everybody came in. Mm -hmm. uh, then 2001, uh, we moved to moved ourselves to the JSC dojo, and it officially became under the Asian Imperial Arts Midwest. Right? Mm -hmm. Then I think I also think that there was a time that Jason decided to do his own group, the Hoets Taiko, uh, together at the MBT during that time, uh, and we still continue to. Uh, play music together with Jason, Jason and Ryan and Hide and late, little later on Amy came in. And this was the first sets of the creative music endeavor uh, called the Miyumi Project, the Big Band in 2001. And, and it's been, you know, many, many years since then, but that was kind of an inaugural of the Chicago Taiko people to be associated with the creative music. Um, aside from the taiko taiko music. So I think you also um, le uh, kind of benchmark that tradition, um, which is Hide and Jason and Raya, and a little later, Amy. Right? Mm -hmm. So Hide was uh, there for a little while, then leadership changed to Amy, uh, all the way to 2012, and Amy became one of the first professional, so-called professional taiko player at the time, mm -hmm. uh, who solidly make living playing the taiko and teaching the taiko, all mm -hmm. the way to 2012. Then Amy retired. She had another uh, agenda for her life. To now, now I think she now has a, a fitness school in. Mm -hmm in downtown Chicago, the West Loop side. So she has her own fitness uh, place. But uh, then since after that, you two came in and started to gradually take the leadership and today. Uh, you know, that's like the sort of a rapid history. Okay. This. Yeah. And, but within this uh, two leadership, especially I think Amy, leadership to you guys um, we incorporated a lot of music from 1960s and 70s Tokyo where I used to be so Gin Tenkai idea came in and you guys formed a separate unit called Gin Tenkai with Amy and, and you did I think that's when that's because the type of music changed uh -huh. uh, Yeah, because it was what Hide was doing in the beginning was very, very similar, resemble to other type of group at the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And when Amy decided that she wants to learn more about this Kintenkai stuff, um, I think the whole music changed and, and it also challenged you guys in a different kind of a music stream. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. So um, then I think you guys broke so many, many levels of new things for the Chicago Taiko culture. So, so today we have community endeavor mm -hmm. and we also do the commercial assignments and we also do the creative assignments with the advanced players, with, the, with you guys, and we do have a professional set. And all these things that when we talk about it, I think every single, uh, agenda that we had in the history was always groundbreaking things for Chicago Taiko. And, and uh, I am very, very proud of everybody, all members of the Tsukasa Taiko to be part of this moving history. And, and uh, uh, mm -hmm. luckily we we're able to kind of create our uh, Taiko legacy, creative music legacy 
website with the city of Chicago now in, in you know launching the project in October so we will have more uh, history uh, but but I want to I want to kind of start introducing our legacy with our community endeavor in in uh, inviting some of the community members to talk about Tsukasa Taiko yeah, just to, just to mention one thing. Um, so when Kyoto and I were younger and then we were doing the formative foundational years of what Tsukasa Taiko is today, we, uh, mm -hmm. bulk of our assignments were community performances. You know, we do like right, right. before large ones um, for the Japanese American or like Asian American events for like the city. And it was like a big thing for us as um, young drummers to partake in like oh we get to perform at daily plaza for asian pacific american heritage month or we get to right, perform right. at mitsua summer festival and um community events were um primarily the bulk of you know our public performances and it was an exciting time for us but over the years as our organization grew and as our performer count increased um next thing we knew community performances were just kind of you know like one fifth of all the things we do because um, up until this year, we keep a really active schedule of 75 plus performances, you know, professional, private, commercial, community all combined, including mm -hmm. our concerts in the winter. So yeah, yeah, I think it's really exciting to get to look back and discuss with <laughs> community members of what we've established because this is where we kind of all started. Like we all started as community drummers and then evolved into what we are today. And right, I think right. all the, the people were into different places. You know, do we, we never saw kids drumming in Millennium Park before Tsukasa yeah. Taiko. So all that stuff is, is really important assets to the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think um, when Kiyomichi and I were kids, you know, that was when we were starting to play at the Cultural Center when we had our Taiko Legacy productions mm -hmm. between the Cultural Center and the, uh, and the MCA. Um, and then, you know, after a few years, it, years, it was, um, consecutively held at the museum mm -hmm. um, and Millennium Park performances also playing at the Pritzker Pavilion you know in the Harris Theater and, and venues around Chicago I think we've played at most of them yeah um, you know us not growing up we didn't really realize what that meant uh, you know it was just something oh that Scusa does as, as an activity and I think that the kids um, our kids now you know do have the opportunity to perform at more venues um, yeah, you know, I think every year, and it's it's also important to kind of let them know that they are part of this continuing legacy and this evolving um, contribution, um, you know, to the community, and that it's uh, a privilege um, yeah. to be able to be part of, you know, that history, and also to have have them be a part of our group and play with us, you know, at, at all of these venues. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, uh, unfortunately, this year we've had to cut uh, our performances <laughs> um, short, and we've switched this live stream mm -hmm. um, uh, system. But I think it's it's also a nice way to go and reflect on what we're able to do, mm -hmm. um, and also look forward and and to uh, grow. I think our members and and um, performances and such. So yeah, yeah. I think Very we so we. Yeah, for this year, sorry, this year, this episode, we do have um, uh, guests uh, from our two different um, kind of performing groups mm -hmm. uh, within Tsukasa Taiko. Um, but I think uh, before we introduce them, we'd like to kind of share little clips of uh, videos um, documenting our performances. Mm -hmm. um, so we have two short clips for you. Uh, one is a performance by the Cool Ladies and R um, adult group um, at the uh, Shubukai annual Shubukai presentation, and another is a, a compiled video of community performances um, that Scott Taiko has been doing over the years. Uh, so we hope you enjoy this clip, and we'll see you after. <laughs> I have no regrets in life anymore. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> now you can get the water. Oh. 
I got one. Kimber, you have one. And that was uh, the two video clips. And the first one, of course, was featuring kind of backstage footage um, of our community performances, including the 4th of July parade, um, our public shows at the 
um, Chicago Park District as part of the D case now night, night out in the parks programming. Um, and then the second one, of course, was with uh, it was out on a more um, professional kind of uh, stage uh, for the Shubukai recital. Um, and so we are going to invite our guests uh, who you actually did see um, as part of the video. Um, so we have Randy and uh, hi and Nicole and Mariko and Kaiwani joining us today. Hi there. Hello, good evening. Hi. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we're so excited to host um, our core members of Community Ensemble, um, both again, like Yoko said earlier, from different performance units uh, within our ensemble uh, structure. So maybe if we could just take a second to introduce yourself and how long you've been with Casa Taiko and then um, how you started playing with us or like little any episodes that you care to share, maybe starting with Randy. Sure. Um, I actually started, I was trying to remember before the stream, I, it was I think 2004, maybe 2003 or 2004. So mm -hmm. um, when uh, Tatsuoki Tatsu Sensei was explaining the history of um, Tsukasa Taiko, it was a few years after um, after the start of Tsukasa Taiko. So I, I've been a, um, been with the community group for a while, and um, I I had been doing at the time some um, West African drumming and kind of dabbling in that, and had a background in music. Um, and I had seen uh, Hida Yoshi Yoshihashi perform. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, wow, I want to learn that. I want to learn how that I go. So I, I found the, that the community group um, operated the dojo at JASC and, um, and signed up. And um, yeah, I've been, uh, I've been with the group ever since. And uh, now I, I regularly play with the uh, community, um, I guess, section of the group called uh, the Cool Ladies and R. And I'm the R. Of the <laughs> ladies and R. <laughs> That's been a lot of fun. And uh, uh, I, I, I believe uh, several of the, of the ladies were on last week as well. And um, the funny tidbit is uh, when I first joined, I, I think they were actually called Yama, uh, but I, and then I was kind of in a separate group. Mm -hmm. And um, I think unofficially, um, the ladies would call themselves the Yama Mamas. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it was the Yama Mamas, and then that eventually became the cool ladies in heart, which uh, uh, has, been a, has been a lot of fun. And um, uh, I... I guess what I really love about um, uh, playing with Sakasa is that um, you, for, for those of you watching who might know a little bit about Taiko and have seen Taiko before, you, you might think of it as um, sort of like loud, jamming, um, uh, you know, people yelling and, and you know, martial arts like movements and things like that. And, um, and while we do that in a, you know, in a kind of way, um, what we're really doing with Sakasa Taiko is um, uh, is we're learning music. We're not just mm -hmm. sort of banging away on a, on a, a drum. We're um, uh, really learning pieces, um, even at the community level, even when um, when new students come in um, and, and join the group for the first time, right from like day one, we start learning a new piece. And um, so we're making music. And, and I just think that's really, really wonderful. Thank you. All right. And Nicole and Mariko Kailani, if you want to share your intro. Sure, I'm Nicole Sumida. Uh, so we we were introduced to Casa Taiko because our girls, uh, we were part of a Japanese play group at the Japanese American Service Committee, um, and the teacher there, Naomi Negi, she she was wonderful, and she introduced lots of different cultural activities to the children uh, who attended her school. And so I would say Mariko and Kailani had started going there when they were about three mm -hmm. and maybe by age four or five, I can't recall exactly when, uh, but she brought, um, I believe it was, it might've been Kiyumi at the time. I can't recall it, but it was several members from Tsukasa. And I think Tatsu was there also. And they did mm -hmm. sort of an introduction to Taiko for the toddlers and they loved it. And each, you know, they brought all the drums and each child to, you know, stand at a drum and they were barely tall enough. I mean, they were, the drum was, you know, larger than them in some cases. Yeah. I, re I remember, I think I was there too. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, and he, also the okay. preschool program, Dumbo yes. here is, is, is uh, Kiyomi's mother running yes. the program. <laughs> That's so right. Kiyomi's it, mom. It changes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so she, she was really passionate about Taiko. And so she would, 
she brought she brought members of Sukasa a couple of times, and oh. so um, the girls were exposed pretty young. And I I'm half Japanese. My family's from Hawaii. Um, I'm third generation Japanese American. Um, I did not grow up in the Midwest with a lot of um, exposure to my Japanese culture. It was only when I would go back to Hawaii and experience it. And so when the girls were, I would say five or six, so they've been doing it for about six years, um, we started taking lessons um, with uh, Kyoto-san and Noriko-san at JASC. Mm -hmm. So we've been playing at community events since then. Amazing. Yeah, it's Casa Taiko. We take students, I believe, four and up. So yeah, Kailani yeah. and Mariko are totally of that generation where you start <laughs> young and then um, you're still with us, you know, five, six years down the line. And we hope you continue with us um, for many, many years to come. But is there any like fun um, Casa Taiko memory or anything that you guys want to share, the girls want to share at all? Yeah, sure. um, going to Mitsua every year. For New Year's is always fun. Um, we get to have very yummy food there every time. Yeah. <laughs> totally, totally. Food is an integral part of Taiko, it's Casa Taiko culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for me, like New Year's does not feel complete now without them performing. Like they've been performing at the Mitsua New Year's event probably for five years. Like, yeah. we're, you know, we're usually in town yeah. at New Year's. And uh, like for me personally, I just don't feel I don't feel like the new year is being ushered in unless we're there. So it's just, it's very meaningful for our family. <laughs> That's great. And it's also, did you have something to say? Also, it's very exciting. It's been very, it's very exciting activity. Awesome. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's also exciting for us to watch you guys grow through Taiko, right? And yeah. I remember the first performance, you guys were still very young, so you're very, very nervous to even stand on the stage and, you know, couldn't remember the song and that kind of thing. But now, you know, you're, you're so comfortable on stage. You know, we could say, oh, we need you tomorrow. And you're like, okay. <laughs> and, you know, really, that's how it, it works. <laughs> um, and, yeah. and, you know, growing up on stage. Um, kind of is is a certain kind of experience, and it's lovely for Kiyomi and I kind of went through that, mm -hmm. um, and it's great for us to see now the next generation of of kids doing that as well and sharing that experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then um, just to uh, tap into what Nicole said, that we we love that we can create these unique traditions for family, or even you know like someone like Randy who's been with us for over fifteen years that we kind of become a part, like a part of a fabric of your life within um, community engagement. So it really touches me that you say that you feel like, oh, it's not shogatsu or shogatsu New Year's without my girls playing taiko or like, um, because that that is definitely something that all of us experienced growing up. Like Thanksgiving just meant more taiko, or <laughs> like around holiday season meant a winter <laughs> concert. Um, Easter meant more taiko on the weekends after you do your services or like luncheons. And, um, but because you have this activity that kind of, you know, you get to perform and you get to practice with friends and family and really grow up and have the parents kind of help us out as staff members and other, you know, partners and family members get involved. So it kind of becomes this engagement that, you know, year after year grows into something bigger and better and kind of creates a strong, unique tie that you can't really experience elsewhere that kind of goes back to your, you know, cultural heritage for some of the members or unique cultural experiences for other members if they're not, you know, necessarily Japanese. So yeah, that, that's that way about, aspect. Sorry to cut you off, but I felt that way about um, uh, the 4th of July and seeing yeah. the video that we saw was from the 4th of July, I don't know which year, but um, that was, well, of course we couldn't do it this year, but that's been for me something that I look forward to is that being part of my day uh, each year. Yeah. So yeah, Randy is being with us since, since Hide time was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do, do we have a picture of Hide performing somewhere that, that this is a time that Randy came in, right? Um, there we go. Yeah. Um, mm. That's oh, yeah. Hide. I think Hide is playing the old Daiko there and maybe Amy right next to it or you, Kyoto? I think that's Michelle. Oh, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's Mimi mm -hmm. next to her. Next, okay, right. Yeah. Great. This is so in Chinatown, I think, right? Yes. Yeah. This yeah. Is yeah. Chinatown Summer Festival. Yeah. That we are still doing. And we yeah. have been continuing to play at. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
all these years. So. Yeah, this picture is probably from like 2006 or seven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Michelle and M Mimi is still small. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So, the, yeah. Four, the 4th of July parade video that Randy was talking about that you saw earlier. So we are in Hyde Park. We were invited by, um, you know, like the Chamber of Commerce in Hyde Park to take on one of the floats to participate in their parade and also perform on stage after the parade is done. And one of my personal favorite thing is we get to explore so many different Chicago and Chicagoland area neighborhoods um, that I otherwise would not maybe visit. And I get to do that with my, uh, you know, community members. So we take, every, and everybody lives in different parts of the city. Some of us live in the suburbs, some of us are, you know, in the, in the township, but we get to have these public performances where we kind of go to all these different neighborhoods and then meet different community members there. And then the audience members are always in awe if they've never seen Japanese drumming. So I love that interactive aspect and kind of visiting and showcasing, but also like networking and, you know, building new friends or, um, meeting different community members there and then kind of you know bringing that back with to our community for like future performances so i do enjoy that aspect a lot too great thank you it's also you know in the community level for the we you guys are the first taiko drummer ever mm -hmm. in chicago to be on the float and, and move around <laughs> the, the that's one and also the Thanksgiving parade. You remember yeah. Thanksgiving parade every year, they never had fixed station drum group mm -hmm. since you guys started to do this this drumming. Mm -hmm. Then today we have many there are Korean drumming group and other Chinese drumming group and everybody. But it's it's so this is what I mean by that. You you guys pioneered so many level of different things. You, know, you guys are first one to play on the on the Chicago River on the boat. Oh um, yes. I don't know if you remember that. I do you, remember that. Yeah. Yes, you went yeah. through the Chicago River. To play. So I, I think that's that's really fascinating to me mm -hmm. to see all of you breaking breaking the opening up a new door for the community type of performances. Mm -hmm. It's really great to have you. Mariko and Kailani also performed at our very early morning marathon showcases, I remember last summer. Yeah. <laughs> and it was for the Chicago Triathlon, but they performed at the Kids Triathlon event, which was which I thought that's was right. that's, that's cool. another thing, right? Yeah, because yeah. all these yeah. um, young triathletes are participating and they're seeing, you know, uh, performers like Mariko and Kailani, and then they enjoy it as they're doing their race, and then we get to kind of inspire them too. So it's very much this um, reciprocative, right. really cool engagement. It's a very fun event, Kimi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really great energy, yeah. Right. I think a marathon to today, we have a different type of groups to do in the marathon mm -hmm. uh, event, but you, that's because the type of was the first one to do the half half marathon or rock and roll marathon mm -hmm. you know many years ago so so that's also a, another a benchmark for you guys too yes yes right thank you very much for coming here yeah thank you for sharing your experience Me too. thank you so much so now are we going to go to the creative endeavor on the uh, uh so we're going to jump ahead to uh, take you to another dimension of the tsukasa for a moment um i think we're going to do the nobi uh this this is a piece that was i uh, um i reproduced and reincarnated um the uh, uh a piece in and uh, every year at the Taiko Legacy at the MCA Museum of Contemporary Art, I have two programs going. One is the Tsukasa Taiko itself, and it's focused more on community endeavor of the, the Taiko Grammy. The other one is called Reduction, and many of the music fans, uh, I know you come to see Reduction show, and Reduction is one of the uh, sort of a taiko and the arts performing arts put together and of course the music and the taiko drumming uh so it's it's kind of our um, experimental template platform of utsukasa taiko 
And uh, um, I, I had so many different pieces that we experimented in the 60s and uh, late 60s and 70s. And uh, um, I kind of like this new generation drummers to reinterpret the pieces from the 70s because uh, 1970s taiko drumming in Tokyo um, was very different from what we see today. And, and I would I, I like to kind of reproduce this idea and aesthetics into this uh, uh, Tsukasa Taiko members to experience that that kind of a Taiko drumming, different kind of a Taiko drumming. So here is the uh, example of the piece called Nobi. And if the video is ready, we'll go to the video right now. This is one of the performance from MCA uh back in a few years a few years ago and we will have a guest speakers to to talk about this piece
that was a little segment from this wonderful piece called Nobi. And, and there's, a, there's a very, very strong Japanese aesthetics built into this, this piece. And uh, um, I had uh, Melody Takata play Odaiko and, and uh, uh, Kyoto and Megan Lee and Jovia Armstrong and Coco Elises on the percussion side. And we had Takane Umeya on the Tsuzumi Taiko and Noriko Sugiyama on it. And, and it's a very, very serene, powerful aesthetics that we carried on as a Taiko art part of the, uh, um, the kind of a experimentalism part of the Tsukasa Taiko endeavor. And I have a guest uh, who just were playing on Odaiko uh, on this video, Melody Takata from Gendu Arts. And hello, Melody. Hey, good to see everyone. Good glad, to see you. I'm really glad to be here. Yes, so Melody and I have been uh, collaborating uh, this, this uh, idea of her drummers and herself and her drummers are coming into Chicago and we come to San Francisco for for last many many years and let me tell you Melody I don't know if you remember this Taiko legacy to do the Taiko legacy at the Museum of Contemporary Art for for Tsukasa Taiko uh, both museum and the cultural center many years ago actually was inspired by your large show that we attended when Kyoto and Eiei was very small. Uh, that was Gen Taiko. I think you used to call Gendu Arts Gen Taiko. And that was one of the Gen Taiko show with Nakajima Sensei playing the shamisen and singing. You had a dance and you had a bunch of community people working together, making a meal and everything else at the uh, uh, JCC, JCCNC. Yes. So right. that that was my inspiration actually to, to do the large scale Taiko concert in Chicago because there hadn't been any large scale Taiko concert uh, since then. You know, then then I had you and Lenore Lee and Joy uh, came to Chicago to do the very first Taiko legacy at the MCA. That was in conjunction with the Japanese Chambers of Commerce many years ago. Yeah. Then we moved it. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the 150th anniversary. So so we owe Gen Taiko for today's Taiko legacy. Because then then because it took me another good tenure to bring in this yeah. re reduction idea into the programming. So the first, I would say first probably 10. Taiko was a Taiko legacy, just like a large scale. Uh, it was a largest scale uh, Taiko, and you've been you've been there every year since then, even with a broken feet. Um, we have a picture. <laughs> we have a picture of you at the Taiko legacy doing this ribbon dance. Uh, I don't know if you remember. I think you had a broken yeah, I leg. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, I don't know if I staff can. Yeah. Do we can we get a picture of uh, Melody <laughs> Takata with a broken leg? With a, um... yeah, I'm wearing a I wore a, a long gown. Actually, it was part of my wedding dress. Yes, yes. Oh, it was a part of your wedding dress. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, so, would you talk a little bit about your experience? Here we go. This you are doing this uh, Taiko legacy. Um, with your broken leg and, and a cast, uh, which we covered it up with a taiko, then you do the ribbon dance and you play the old taiko. Uh, but but I, would you talk a little bit about your uh, uh, personal experience with this evolution of the taiko legacy for many years? Yeah, that it's an interesting story because I remember talking with you about that at the cultural center, Chicago Cultural Center. And um, you kept talking about that group in the 70s back in Tokyo. And I remember thinking, well, how is that really different than what we're doing? But I'm getting kind of bored of the regular taiko that was being played in, in um, North America. 
And what I learned in um, Tokyo has, has a very set kind of repertoire. So um, I think when you were describing um, the Genten Kai music, uh, I had a strong curiosity towards it because it's not just focused on the music, but it, 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 it embraces this whole theatrical musical production that is, um, has a cultural relevance that's a little higher than just doing taiko drumming. So I really appreciated talking about it. Um, and I remember you, you had told me some, you gave me some rhythm piece, pieces to do, to incorporate with the hachijo that um, we ended up um, making for wearing a kimono uh, for the girls to do a dance and playing taiko drum. So that was really nice. And when you started, when I remember when we first asked you to, to show us a piece, uh, which is my favorite piece, uh, Yorokobi, um, with a lot of movement and playing on the drum. And I thought that was uh, a beautiful way of taking the next step with Taiko. And it seems strange to me that this music is from the 70s or you know, from your sensei whose life was probably more of the 50s and 60s, right, into the 70s. And um, thank God you wrote it down <laughs> that you'll be able to remind that. So it's been quite remarkable to see the progress and the um, musicality and the com uh, complexity of the music and the intertwining with uh, jazz music and the but but I think all, I also have to um, let let the people know about this that I all needed to meet someone who would be interested in that aesthetics because you know we talked about this number of times that during the time. Hide was doing the group, especially the whole whole taiko culture in, in the 90s and 2000s. People weren't really interested in this aesthetics. And until I met you, and, and also I go back to uh, Amy, um, the second leadership in our group, she also showed an interest on this aesthetics of incorporating the dance and the theatrical thing and performing. And, and it wasn't really popular. I mean, what this wasn't really popular back then in the 70s, and, and it wasn't really popular in the late 90s and 2000s, you know, until, until I met you guys who really showed interest. And I think what impressed me about the Gentaiko concert back then was that you already had in many ways that you you brought in the dancers, you brought in the singer, you brought in different things. And I remember you had a set in JCCNC that was made with a parachute. Parachute, and, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, so that, was really, called, uh, that was called Soko Arts. Festival. Oh, Soko Arts Festival, oh. right, right, mm -hmm. yeah. So that, I think Kyoto and Eigen were very small. Yeah. In, in the, um, but I think I, think I always, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I performed with Nakajima Sensei. I played the Shime Taiko, the Ohayashi. Oh yeah, I, that's right. I, yeah. So having that really uh, made me re-inspired by what what I did in the seventies, which died out because it was so unpopular. But but I think oh, you I you brought my spiritual connection to all this stuff by having your show in San Francisco and I decided oh my god I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do this in Chicago then we started to do the you know lot of a type of legacy shows oh I see the incorporating of Japanese yeah Nihonbuyo and so forth right yeah that's true I didn't think about that um, I guess because my relationship with Nakajima sensei started back in the 90s and as we um, started to work more together and then collaborating with the, the drumming. Yeah. Ordinary how the momentum right. took us. And so doing Soko Arts at that time, um, we were working with Francis. So Francis's right. jazz band and mm -hmm. incorporating kind of world music with that. Um, 
and Nakajima Sensei and uh, Suze Takeda. Right. So here's the picture uh, that we see right now of Hachijo. This is your arrangement on the Hachijo Taiko and, and uh, sort of lived in Tsukasa Taiko for many, many years to come because, because you taught us to do this. And uh, at one point, all of our advanced players are all, all ladies, all girls, all female. So we had, you know, opportunity to do a lot of uh, Hana Hachijo there. This is, so this is a Melody Takata influence on our uh, Taiko maneuver here. And we, we did a couple of shows at, at the Taiko Legacy. Um, also, and yeah. Oh yeah, Steppenwolf Theater, yeah, we did, we did that. Um, I remember we put this, oh, here is a, some of the pictures from Kyoto, Miyumi and Megan. And here's Melody Takata in the backstage practicing that. And Fujima Sensei changing your clothes. And here is Melody. Oh, wow. I haven't seen that picture before. <laughs> yeah, these are the cool picture of uh, Melody Takata on Odaiko. Um, so I, think, I remember one year. Yeah. I remember one year you had me play Odaiko, I think, the entire show. Right. Or there were like five pieces, three or five pieces. Right. And having to keep my arms up <laughs> for 13 to 15 minutes at a time was it's pretty extraordinary, but um, I've come to appreciate that uh, being having that opportunity to go through that process. Right. Um, well, you're also think, you're breaking the stereotype of female drummer that way. Yeah, I, I think the musicality that you bring into it, um, the improv improvisation with jazz. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is very intriguing and um, takes it to a much higher level than what we normally see as an Odaiko. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So I am so glad to continue to have you part of our Taiko legacy in Tsukasa Taiko legacy, not the concert, but the legacy itself that we're moving along to the next uh, next generations and and we always always appreciate your participation to to this uh journey here and uh you know we're going to be in your event in san francisco next week for the japan day festival uh, Yay. Yeah. so thank you very much melody and and we'll see thank you, you soon right yeah bye-bye so now um we got to talk to Melody Takata of the Gendu Arts, used to be Gentaiko, and, and uh, like I said, it was a very, very influential uh, group, Taiko group from San Francisco, in many ways for Tsukasa Taiko and today's national Gintenkai. So now I have an international guest, uh, Chizuru Kinea, one of the performers who's been with us uh, since Taiko Legacy number two, number one, I think she's been with us for so many years. And uh, uh, this year, we cannot really have her in Chicago. So she is participating on a live live stream. Chizuru Sensei, Domo, Ohayo gozaimasu. Yes. Yes. Um, she's going to give you a little performance uh, for, for as a international guest today. So here is Chizuru Kineya Sensei. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Chizuru Kineya. Uh, I will play uh, Shamisen solo uh, medley, uh, which combines some um, uh, several phrases from Nagauta songs. Um, Nagauta song is a very long song. Um, each phrase is, uh, describe uh, the town of Edo, Edo scene, and Matsuri festival, and um, uh, Yudachi, that is uh, a kind of school, uh, which um, is a uh, sudden raining in the afternoon. The last part is um, uh, Matsuri sound come again after uh, stop, stop the raining. <laughs>
Thank you very much. どうもありがとうございました、千鶴先生。Thank you very much. あの、千鶴先生はもう、太鼓レガシー、レギュラーで、You've been in 太鼓レガシー for so many number of years and so many different variations with a different artist playing together. で、あの、ちょっとですね、あの太鼓レガシーのビデオがありますので、それを一緒にご覧になってみてください。ここから、あ、ショー、あ、ビデオテープ、リトル、Tiny video clip from、uh, Chizuru Sensei's uh, uh, Shamisen playing at the Taiko Legacy.、Um, so, when the, whenever the video is ready, we will watch that for a few seconds. So that was the mo- one of the reduction moments with the、uh, experimental film in the background. And Chizuru Sensei was playing with、uh, Kyoto on Tuzumi and Jovia Armstrong on the side. And Sensei, I know, like, こういったいろんなことを毎年やっていただいてるんですけどもあのそ、そのなんかご,ご感想はどうですかこういう太鼓グループと一緒にあのやっていただいてるって。英語でよろしいですかはいはい、英語でお願いします。Um, I was very excited and surprised at seeing the Taiko Legacy at first time、uh, because、um, even in Japan, we seldom see Taiko performances like Taiko Legacy,、um, which is、uh, performed Taiko with、uh, elegant dancing or a beautiful costume. And,、uh, Popular, most popular taiko program is now、uh, in Japan is、uh, only beating taiko with any,、uh, without any、uh, costume or、uh, the elegant dancing. But、uh, I think the elegant style is coming from the traditional Edo Skeroku Daiko,、uh, which has、um, almost disappeared now.、Uh, but uh, you uh, and you, Taiko Legacy has been.、Um, Keeping and protecting that way. So I was very excited、uh, that so,、uh, the Taiko legacy is a great and precious、um, legacy, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, we, we, try, to, we try to keep the original aesthetics of this、uh, Edo Taiko, but still do a lot of experiments. But,、uh, but I like the The idea of、uh, Edo Taiko in, into our group. And、uh, your shamisen helps a lot because, because you also bring in this Tokyo Nagauta shamisen into our group. And, and、uh, it's, been, uh, it's been really, really wonderful to have you every year. And uh, uh, hopefully, this pandemic is going to be over soon and you, you will be coming back to Chicago again. I hope- I hope to come again soon. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you And Chizuru Sensei h a v e different shows in Tokyo, and her other musicians always、uh, come to Taiko Legacy to perform with us as well as Chizuru Sensei. So, I want to introduce a few of these our regular 
uh, a tech legacy performer. Here is Hyakkyo Fukuhara. Um, Hyakkyo san. Hi. Ohayo saimasu. Ohayo saimasu. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, this is Hyakkyo Fukuhara. She has been with us for a number of years and playing Shinobue, playing Kan. No Khan and all this stuff, and also teaches Miyumi, one of my daughters, uh, how to play Shinobu. So she's been learning from Hyakkyo Sensei. ということで、Hyakkyo さん、どうも朝早くからありがとうございます。はい。<笑>はい、<笑>じゃあ、あのー、演奏をちょっとしていただけるということですね。はい。Great. So Hyakkyo さん、これ、give you a short performance for you. For, for the viewers. So here is Hyakkyo Fukuhara. Hi. <laughs> どうもありがとうございました。This is Hyakkyo Fukuhara and、uh, uh, she's been with us for so many years and、uh, I have a Kiyomi as an interpreter between our conversation. で、あの、Hyakkyo 先生、いつもあのタイプレガシーに来ていただいてありがとうございます
。<笑>で、あの、ど、どうでしょうか、この、あの、千鶴先生にも同じことを聞いたんですけども。たい、この太鼓レガシーエクスペアレンスっていうのは、ど、どんなもんでしょうか。うん、もう、本当、えー、興奮するっていうか、もう楽しいっていうか、ワクワクしますね。So, for her, it's just something really exciting and kind of inspiring. And waku waku suru in Japanese、um, <laughs> it means,、um, yeah, it's just exhilarating in like a positive way. But, like, I think, 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 like, I ね、なな慣れるのも大変ですよね。More often than that,、uh, not,、um, she's surprised because what Tat Sensei was saying was that when, they, when her and Chizuru Sensei and, and any of the guest artists arrive from Japan, we often ask them for improvisations and on spot performances and、um, switch ups that, you know, Uh, last until the very minute before the performance. But, so she's often surprised, but I don't think she minds because she always pulls it off. They are not. What does she do? I'm not sure. 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 うちのそうですね、あの日本でもなかなかない、まあ、本当に世界に一つかもしれないですね。<笑><笑>ありがとうございます。So, Tatsu asked、um, her, you know, we like to take pride in the fact that Tsukasa Taiko is kind of this one of a kind drumming group with all these international collaborations that we host every year and how she kind of felt about it. And Hyakyo san answered that actually, you know, it, it's quite rare for a group like yours. You might not even find it in Japan or even the rest of the world. So it's truly a unique,、um, one of a kind experience. あのユニークなところ、はい、そうですねあの組もう本当にこう太鼓だけでなくその全体のパフォーマンスがすごいっていうか素晴らしいっていうか、okay. <笑>うまく表現できないですけど。Um, so he just asked, What is it that's particularly unique or stands out to you about Tsukasa Taiko or when working with Tsukasa? And she said that, Well, you know, for you guys, it's not just the Taiko、um, as a performance, but the overall stage production and、um, how you yeah, produce or arrange the entire show is particularly、um, unique. So that's what I think is special. どうも嬉しいですね。そう言っていただけると。どうもありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。お忙しい中。Yes.、Uh, so, <笑> Hyakkyo さん is participating and presenting her、uh, Shinobue this morning from her own studio there. And she has a student waiting for it now because she, she's right in the middle of the training session. And お稽古中にどうもありがとうございます。<笑>ありがとうございました。ありがとうございます。Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, Hakyo san is uh, uh, doing the uh, uh, training session every day, and、uh, we asked her to kind of uh, uh, do this for us this morning. So, she had another student waiting for it.、Uh, so, we have another、uh, guest, but before that, I'd like to show you what she does in, in, a, in a different way. Context at the Taiko Legacy. So, if the video is ready, we will see a few、uh, cuts of、uh, Hyakyo san's video、uh, from the Taiko Legacy performance.、Um.
Hyakkyo-san's uh, different situation at the Taiko Legacy, of course, she would do the uh, Shinobue Bamboo Food accompaniment for the large ensemble, which you saw in the beginning of the video, as well as, as a real uh, a classical number that she played with a hand drum. And that was a section from the Kabuki play. Uh, also, the last part was a duet with Edward Wilkerson. And uh, uh, Edward Wilkerson has also been a uh, vital part of Taiko Legacy for so many years, and, and uh, he often does collaboration with our guests from Tokyo. So um, hyakkyo sens also uh, been uh, um, e experimenting with a bunch of different musicians in Chicago. And thank you very much, hyakkyo san And we are going to move into the next guest from Tokyo again. There's Umeya Takane is our uh, percussionist, and she plays a uh, tsuzumi and oka. It's a hand drum that people use for the kabuki. Ah, Takane san, ohayo gozaimasu. Ohayo gozaimasu. <laughs> 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 ちずる先生軍団の一人としてですね、シカゴに来ていただいて、これからちょっとあのちょっとインタビューをさせていただきますので、あのそうタカネウメヤ has also been Chicago number of times as a part of a Chizuru Kinea clan, and she's also collaborated with many different professionals. She's she's done a show with a Jovia Armstrong and Coco Elises and Hamid Drake and Michael Zrang and all these different percussionists in Chicago. Uh, but this morning, I think, Narika, uh, so she's going to play a tsuzumi, which is the Japanese hand drum here. So uh, let's have the play a tsuzumi, which is the Japanese hand drum here. So let's have Takane san play music for us. Oh, oh, you. Yo!
That was Takane Umeya. Uh, Umeya Takane san, thank you very much. 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 So he just asked her,、um, How are you keeping busy during this、um, time with the coronavirus? And she said that, you know, like many other musicians,、um, I'm facing、um, multiple cancellations, but I've switched and I've adapted to this remote session. So I'm keeping busy that way in the virtual space. I saw, I saw uh, Takane san's uh, 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 no audience、uh, performance on the YouTube. Mm. That was a, like a really large ensemble. Now, it's a very large ensemble. So, 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 it's a very large ensemble. Yeah, so Takane san did this no audience show that was streamed on YouTube. She has her own ensemble with about 16 members, and 11 out of the 16 were able to participate on stage、um, in a very large venue, but just with completely no audience. But they streamed the music and the performance. Takane san is a regular member of the Takane san. この司太鼓の太鼓の太鼓レガシーに来ていただいて,てる時のそのご感想をお聞かせ願いたいと思いまして、はいはい、ありがとうございます、えっと、1回目初めて行った時はもう何もわからない状態で行ったのでもうすごいドキドキでどうなるんだろうと思ったんですけれどももう皆さん優しくて楽しくてあの急遽何かすることが多かったんですけれどもなんか皆さんと楽しくいろいろやらせていただいてなんか<laughs> wow, <laughs> so,、um, so he just asked her, you know, of course, now she's a regular member and a guest artist at Taiko Legacy concerts. So, how has your experience been? And she said that the first time I participated,、um, I was quite nervous as I was diving in without prior knowledge about what's going on or how the show is going to unfold. But、um, everybody was very nice to me and it was a very fun. Exciting experience, so I think over time I became used to improvising and kind of doing things on the fly. So now,、um, you know, many years later and many Taiko Legacies later, I'm kind of able to、uh, do that more much easier. Like, I know, 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 こう作っていかなきゃいけないのでどうしても皆さん来られてから急にあれやってこれやってっていうことが多くなってでももう本当にいつも素晴らしいパフォーマンスをしていただいてもいやいやいやいありがとうございます。Really, only have about a week with the guest artists from Tokyo when we create these Taiko Legacy stages. And then we have to fill in all these、um, you know, voids like in our production and whatnot. So we're always asking the guest artists to kind of improvise, but also、um, uh, reevaluate certain things that we may have practiced earlier in the week. But then it kind of changes last minute. But she's very, very flexible. And we really, really appreciate her contributions over the years and her participation and her. Um, adaptability basically to everything. And she just said, Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you for having me. Yes, Hontoni, Ano, Domo, Arigato gozaimasu. So I was、uh, supposed to be with Chizuru Sensei、mm -hmm. and Takane san and、uh, Hyakyo san and a bunch of other people in this May. We, we had the concert ready to go、uh, for the Chizuru Sensei's event, but we unfortunately it could, couldn't happen because of the Pandemics, but uh, uh, I would love to have her back with、uh, Chizuru Sensei and Hyakyo san again. Mm -hmm. uh, um,
とうございます。どうもありがとうございました。高野さん。So this concludes our special guest from Tokyo. That's a, that's a, a sort of a, what we call Chizuru Kinea clans.、Uh, every guest of this instrumentation of、uh, flute in Tsuzumi and、uh, all these other. In the street performers that we have, in, in the kabuki dancers we have, they're all part of the、uh, Chizu Kineya ensemble、um, from Tokyo. And we've been having a, a very, very nice correspondence、uh, between them. And、uh, we go there sometimes. And, and uh, uh, Hyakkyo san teaches Miyumi, our member, how to play the、uh, Shinobue. And,、uh, Takane san teaches the Suzumi for our member Kyoto.、Uh, so、um, I hope to keep this relationship going through the Taiko Legacy. Now I have、uh, a Jovia Armstrong on, on, the, on the stage here. Jovia Armstrong, <laughs> how are you? I'm good, Tatsu. How are you? I'm good.、Um, good. <laughs> so Jovia has been part of our、uh, a journey, musical journey, for a number of times. And、uh, we just wanted to have you come in and chat about your experience with the Taiko Legacy and as, a, as a musician and friends and everybody. Oh, yeah.、Uh, <laughs> um, it's been a really great musical experience as well as a great. Cultural experience as well.、Um, you know, I, I've never played with taiko drummers before. And what was really special about the experience the first time around was working with so many women.、Um, <laughs> I just remember, I, I don't remember where we met. You, you just start calling me <laughs> and I start showing up. And,、um, And it was really awesome because、um, I found myself in a room full of women who are playing these really huge drums that we typically only, at least in my experience, saw men doing.、Mm -hmm. um, and that was just really nice. I can't even really explain the reasons why it felt good.、Um, but also culturally,、um, I, I feel like I finally learned how to use chopsticks <laughs> just,、uh, you know, by hanging out with you guys、um, during the, the sound checks, the rehearsals,、um, you know, int being introduced to、uh, Asian foods that I had never had before. <laughs> yeah, really, though, like, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just a, a lady from Detroit and、um, who decided to play percussion. And so, For me,、um, the camaraderie has been really awesome and a, a great experience for me.、Mm -hmm. Great.、Um, I think I tell you, the,、um, the, our guest before, the, the previous guest and partner, Melody Takata, I think she's one of the f r o n t i e r in this era、uh, of the Taiko culture to actually come out to play. and Bunch of Melody's disciples, or they're all female drummers. And you know, I, you know, my background, I grew up in women's house. So, you know, Geisha house is full of ladies playing instruments, dancing, and things. So, yeah, it, it was very natural for me to adapt myself i n t o that culture. And,、mm. and, uh, in fact,、uh, my group always had a large number of female drummers. Mm. Yeah, and,、uh, and it yeah. also breaks the, the, the stereotype of taiko drumming. Yeah, I, I agree.、Um, you know, I just really I enjoyed it because it, it was just the energy. You know, it's a different energy.、Um, and like you said, it, it does break down those stereotypes about what women should be playing, what we can play, what we're good at. Um, so it's just it's very powerful. It's, it's empower, empowering, I should say.、Mm -hmm. um, and I remember inviting a potential student of mine, a young girl, and her mom came to、um, one of the shows. And I just got all of these texts after the show about, from the mom about how her daughter was so inspired. 
um, by what she saw that night at the MCA. Um, And I think that's why um, these things are important to see more women drumming and more women just playing instruments, period. You know, I think it's really important. Yeah, right. Um, I think the the show um, we had uh, that you talked about, that was you and Coco on the both side. Yeah. And Melody, Kyoto, Megan, and Noriko san in Takane, Korea. So there's all all of you are playing the music together. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, um, very very powerful uh, segments. I, I I remember that. I think that was only a few years ago. It was. It was just I think yeah. about three years ago, mm-hmm. two or three years yeah. ago. Um, I also like the idea of improvisation between all of these instruments that. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes are not played together. I mean, Coco typically brings her green congas, right. um, which we, you know, those drums are predominantly used in, in Cuba. And I'm playing this box that is predominantly in Peru and kind of incorporating this drum set sound. And it's really awesome because although we rehearse, um, there, there's this more spiritual connection between mm-hmm. all of us because the music itself um, wasn't memorized, at least from my perspective and Coco's. Mm-hmm. And so there were there were moments I remember when uh, Kyoto would, like I could watch her pull her arm back to strike her, her drum and I would just kind of feel her and follow with her. And so there was no metronome, of course, but it was just more so this connection of watching with the eyes and listening. Um, and that's the part I, I really like is that connection of, yeah. and also the suspense of what are they going to do now? <laughs> and and what am I going to do next? And what is Coco going to do next? And also like leaving each other's space. Right. right. Yeah. That's that's very interesting that that you mentioned about that. I because I can't even remember when when and how we met Jovia. I don't either. Yeah, uh, I don't. Uh, yeah, it's probably many years ago, right? I want to say we we either. Oh wait, maybe you and I for the first time were together with Nicole Mitchell. No. Mid- no, before that. no, it was because before. We, you, you were with me on the Miyumi project and other shows before the Mandola's Awakening. Really? Yeah. So we've known each other for a lot longer than I yeah. remember. I, I kind of have a feeling that we met through three arts. Oh, okay. Uh, right. Were you 2011? No, I think maybe I was 2010. Okay, so maybe... Oh, was it for my show when they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that was my first I time meeting that's, you. That's probably oh. the first time I met you. It's with the I, three I think. When I hired you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, but but I think people don't know. Jovia and I were together touring uh, in many internationally together with Nicole Mitchell's uh, project. So that's when we had uh, the more, co- you know, conversation about a lot of other things with, with uh, uh, including the type. So I would say that was a three arts. And then we participated in my Miyumi project a couple of times. Yeah. You know, with, then with Coco, then, uh, then Taiko Legacy to Nicole Mitchell. Wow. Right, right. We've got so history. That, I think <laughs> that's, that's the history that we have. Great. Um, thank awesome. you, Jovia, for coming to our uh, live casting. It, this is a really, really pleasure to talk to all of our guests and sort of going back to the history of the Taiko Legacy. It's great. Yeah. Thank you thank for you. having me. Yes, yes. So um, we're, this is Jovia Armstrong, and I hope to have you back in Chicago soon. I'll be there. Just call me. Are you coming home for the Christmas? I, I, I'm planning to, yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. So that means you can come to the Taiko Legacy. Because we are going to do we are going to do Taiko Legacy with no audience. Oh, um yes. I'm 
I'm all the way there. Yes, you're you're there. So, uh, cool. ladies and gentlemen, Jovia is going to be joining us <laughs> at the Taiko Legacy. Thank you, Jovia, for coming to visit. Thank, thank you so much, Tatsu. Right. Thank okay. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. That was Jovia Armstrong, and I think we we may have a little bit of a clip of a uh, uh, Jovia's uh, uh, performance with us. I think exactly the one that she was talking about a few minutes ago about all female drumming so we may have the the video clip of that section um if not uh we we're not going to uh, uh oh yeah we oh, do yeah, we here do. we go here we go So you got it. That was a uh, um, Taiko Legacy, and, and this was exactly what Jovio was talking about. It was uh, Melody Takata, Megan the Kyoto Aoki, and uh, Jovia Armstrong, Coco Elises, and Noriko Sugiyama, and Takane Umea. Um, that was a uh, very, very nice piece called Nobi. And it was inspired by the uh, novel that was written during, uh, about the World War II. And, and it's been one of my uh, favorite story. And we made a piece uh, probably in the mid 1970s to um, uh, commemorate that novel. And uh, we performed in Tokyo, the very small theater originally, and I reincarnated that stage onto the MCA. And we have a, uh, a next guest coming in to talk about. So this uh, today is uh, this idea of going back to history of Tsukasa Taiko and showing you a, a different parts of our musical journey with Tsukasa Taiko and also showing you the the other part of the experimentalism that's taking place in our group. And we have Michael uh, Zirang in the screen now. Michael, how are you? I'm very well. Nice to see you, Brother Tatsu. Yes, how are you? So uh, he is probably one of the longest musical friends that I have in Chicago. We go way back. Uh, way, way back in the history, uh, and we have working jazz trio called Trio Waz, W-A-Z, uh, Wilkerson Aoki Zirang, and um, Michael has always been part of the Taiko Legacy reduction. And uh, um, one of the great memory of my, my musical memory with Michael is that when I produced the album uh, called Kyoto back in the 90s, I didn't have a taiko drummer to play this taiko song. So I had Michael's Zran come to the studio and he loosened up his one of the floor tom and he played the taiko drum for me. And that's the song called Wedlock. Uh, Wedlock. And, and I performed number of times with a real taiko but the original recording on on a record 
that I have in 19, uh, 1990-something was Michael Zerang playing the taiko drum sound on his floor tom. That's my memory. Here's, here's Michael. So, Michael, would you mind talking about your experience in the taiko legacy a little bit? Of course. And first, that experience was so uh, wonderful for me to play the floor tom, Tom, and now to see that you have a whole orchestra of these drums at your disposal. <laughs> <laughs> You've come a long way, my friend. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's it's been great to come in, especially these these years with coming in with Hamid and playing with Egon and, of course, in the other ensemble uh, work. Uh, it's such a it's such a treat to be on the stage with all of that sound that comes from these drums. And, uh, you know, even when Hamid and I have these two full drum kits amongst the other taiko drums, they sound like paper. <laughs> so, and the, and the, the, the sound just is, is so all enveloping and, and it rises up and, uh, you really feel it when you're on the stage and it's just, there's nothing like it for me. Uh, and of course, I've had this long history playing with Hamid Drake, so we have this shared vocabulary, but it's so uh, uh, wonderful to put what we have in the context of all of these other uh, drums and musicians. And uh, yeah, very special. Yes, we, we try to maintain our creative uh, impulse with the, with the Taiko, because Taiko has such a uh, stereotype in, in the... Uh, in the the visual stereotype as well as the musical stereotype of taiko drumming and yes. uh my sensei had always taught me to break that that barrier and move on to the the taiko and um my sensei was not really a, a rhythmic teacher he was more of a textual teacher and, uh -huh. and i think you and hamid drake together really uh, adds that idea of the the textual drumming you know of course i mean both of you are incredible drummer but but also you also do a lot of landscape and soundscape and textual ideas and and i think it goes well with with our concept of the the experimentalism very much so and also just the uh, the the techniques of all of the taiko when we put them together and we open them up and bring other instrumentalists in, a whole new thing happens every time. It's it's a it's it's not something that you can identify anymore as one or the other, um, jazz or taiko or uh, some kind of world world music. Uh, it's a whole other thing gets created, and it's and it's been really uh, special to see how from year to year that changes and also of course you're bringing all these amazing instrumentalists from all over the place uh, uh, all over the country but also from Japan and to get to play with some of these masters and then also the other thing that's really remarkable for me is that all of the youngsters that you have there all this young energy that, that, uh, that your troupe brings um, it's just the whole spectrum of people are there uh, men and women and <laughs> Uh, just it's a joyous kind of occasion. Every time I, uh, I participate, that's what always what I leave with this feeling of like a very joyful feeling. Mm -hmm. Well, you are also one of the, um, I think one of the very well-known Chicago sort of avant-garde experimental uh, a percussionist drummer, i.e. performing artist, you know. Um, not very many people had seen him sing a song, so, but I have seen you sing a song in the performance. And um, yeah, I've always, you know, I've always, as far as music goes, for me as a percussionist, especially, it's just all about sounds and textures, and there's so many that that are there to explore. Um, so it's 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 always been about that, about. The different timbres and textures that I can get my hands on and somehow make, bring to the world, you know, bring into the world. Um, yeah, that, this experimentalism that I've been dealing with also is 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 
from different cultures. I try to see what's happening in different cultures, uh, especially my own background as being Middle Eastern. Uh, there's such a rich world of music there. And also, uh, you know, any any other kind of world music. So that's a really what I've been, aside from the experimentalism, I've always tried to search into Indian music, into Chinese music, Japanese music, African music. I mean, there's such a rich uh, well of things to pull from and yes. be inspired by. So uh, definitely the Taiko weekends <laughs> are, are high up there for me. Yes, thank you. Um, I think there is a, Michael has been a partner with the Taiko Legacy Reduction since the day one. Um, actually, he was already in Taiko Legacy before we started the uh, reduction because he was there in in when we had a combined program of Taiko Legacy Reduction. Yes. Uh, then since then he's been with us uh, every year except one time. Um, Last year because you did it early and I had it was still traveling. That's right. Yeah, we we missed you there. But yeah. it's gonna happen again this year. Oh, Michael. fantastic! Well, yeah. I, um, I'll be here. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, like... I we would like you to be there. Uh, to uh, we have uh, uh, live casting Taiko Legacy. So okay, yeah, it would be one of the first Midwestern live casting. Taiko Legacy, Taiko okay. concert, in, in that scale, because, you know, I mean, we, we will do the same concert, but it will be live casting. So wow, I hope to see you there, and thank you very much for uh, being here with us tonight. My pleasure, Tatsu, and, and thank you for all that you've done over these years and what you'll continue to do. It's just been magic what you've brought to the city. So I want to thank you. Well, thank sure. you. Thank you very much. We can't do this without you guys, so, you know. Wow. Yeah, I think you probably could do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will see you soon, Michael. Thank okay, you. thank you, brother. Bye-bye. Right. So that was one of one of my longest musical partners uh in in Chicago, Michael Zarang, and it's so happy to see him here. Uh so we're gonna show you a little bit of the this phenomenal drum jam between Michael Zerang and Hamid Drake and uh, Egan Aoki uh, from our ensemble. I think it's led into this collaboration uh, via Jovia Armstrong, if I, uh, collect, uh, if I remember it correctly. So we are going to show you a little bit of this and enjoy.
segment of um, reduction uh, at the Taiko Legacy, the second program of our experimental program of Taiko Legacy. And uh, usually we feature this little section where Egan um, and Michael and Hamid play together. And sometimes we add other performers too. So this particular video that you just saw uh, had the uh, what Jovia was talking about is it had all lady performers and the left Jovia by herself, then it goes into this section. And uh, um, that was a little bit of a taste of their uh, improvising jamming type of. And, and I think Michael noted the very important aesthetic belief that we have at the Tsukasa Taiko is, is, is kind of break the shell of the Taiko drumming itself. And we want to do more uh, experiments and communication through the percussion and the drums via not only just the rhythm, but not, not only but the sound, but it's a texture. And, and I think Hamid Drake and Michael Zerang is so phenomenal on expressing that idea because they have this annual event also called uh, winter solstice and summer solstice and they do this uh, they i think they have been doing this for over 30 years and uh, they have a massive fans to go there to see and i think the elements of these two drama brings into our taiko idea is, is really really wonderful um, and uh, Thank you very much for being with us for so many years, um, Hamid and Michael. Um, Hamid is also um, one of another one of the longest musical partner that I have. I I played with Hamid Drake since many years ago with the Fred Anderson Trio, and we traveled all over the place together. Um, so the legacy itself uh, makes a lot of sense to bring in. Hamid Drake and Michael Ziran to have this section every year. And I have really, really great time watching them play with, with Agen, one of our drummers. Um, okay, so the other part of the important musical collaborator of, of us in mine personally is Edward Wilkerson. And I think Edward Wilkerson is on the stream right now live yes edward wilkerson uh, how are you how are you can you hear me i can hear you yes i'm doing pretty well okay great um so ed um has been also my one of my longest partners there are uh four of the longest partner of my musical partner hubby drake and michael's rank Edward Wilkerson and Boata Borden, those those four people, I've been playing music with them forever. And uh, uh, Ed Wilkerson is, of course, part of the Taiko legacy and the reduction. And he's been to many, many shows together. So, Ed, I want to talk to you a little bit about your personal experience with this Taiko legacy. Uh, Okay, yeah, it's it's um every time every time I've done it, I'm always surprised because you drop me into a different situation, you know, that's always very challenging and it's exciting. And I get a chance to work with some musicians that I would normally never have the opportunity to work with. So I like it because it does challenge me and uh you know, that's that's always a good thing in music, I think. Yes, and and has has the Taiko legacy changed your um idea about the taiko group because we're, oh, yeah. we feel differently about this oh yeah i think um you express it very well you know most americans view of taiko music is of the muscular guys with uh, oil on their bodies you know playing and uh it's more geared to a, a show or more um you know but i think you you have taught me to look for the artistic side of of taiko drumming and uh it's it's in me it's made me look at it a lot differently and so i i've tried to not always approach it as a uh what my preconceived notions were but to try to find a way into the music that that i feel comfortable with that i 
you know, I don't, I don't want to feel like I'm playing like cliches and things like that. So in that sense, it's been a challenge for me to find my way into the music. Every, every situation I, I'm put in, I try to find an honest way to, to kind of express myself in there. And uh, with Tycho, it's, it's because I've been playing with it so long, I, I, I feel a little more comfortable, but uh, um, I, I like it. I mean, it's, 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 it's a, it's a good challenge because the drums are, you know, the drums, I always say that, you know, certain instruments are just like the law, you know, they're like, the drums are like the law, you know, and certain things you can't argue with it. You know, it's so profound when those drummers are all playing together at the Museum of Contemporary Art, you can hear it all over the entire building. You can hear it outside and it's like this profound thing. That's like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta find a way to reckon with it because, uh, it's there and it's, uh, you know, so it's, it's a good challenge for me. So. Great. And, you know, Edward Wilkerson is also, um, as much as I talk to Michael about this, that he, he plays the saxophone, phenomenal saxophone player, but he also does this uh, landscape, soundscape, and a texture, you know, texture. Oh, I like that, yeah. Play, you know, uh, yeah. and um, I, I always love the way he plays the texture and yeah. also he he's an incredible musician yeah you know i think i try to not only approach it as a soloist but i want to support the drums and i want to be like you say part of the landscape too and uh so i like to assume a lot of different roles because sometimes there's rhythmic things that i'll do on the saxophone that might support the drummers and might not necessarily be as a soloist but is uh is part of like you say part of the landscape i like that, that kind yes of so um I, uh, I'm going to play this little video for you, Ed, if you remember this piece called ESL, and it's all always one of my favorite, Edward Wilkerson with a typo. So we're oh. going to watch this for a couple of minutes, yes. Okay. There's a composition from, uh, once again, from the 1970s called ESL. Okay.
Parts of this, you know, 15, 16, 17 minutes piece called ESL. Uh, yeah. And phenomenal performance by Edward Wilkerson. And uh, we were talking about the music while the video was going on that, that I think uh, the combination of the saxophone and, and the taiko drumming, there's no other performing combination like this in this way. I, yeah. I think it's really, really beautiful, and Yeah, yeah, and I really enjoyed that. I brought back a lot of good memories. I think I just said that, you know, the situations are so dramatic. I mean, the drums by themselves lend 
so much drama to the uh, the situation, and there's there's so much uh, it's so much more dramatic because you leave so much space between the attacks and everything. So it builds up all the suspense, and then the next attack, and then there's silence, and so it's a re it's a really interesting challenge to find ways to complement that on my saxophone. Yeah, uh, it's it's really really. I I think our uh, performers also uh, lo love this piece, and I remember. Um, the very first time I premiered this piece was back in uh, 2006 or seven or something, and there, there was no saxophone. Oh, okay. and, and, and so then I added saxophone having you uh, to, to be part of this song. Then there was a, another version, I believe, that we did one with you and Muata Bowden playing together. Yeah, yeah, I do, I do remember that, yeah. yeah. And uh, that was also beautiful work too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was, that was, I remember that distinctly. It was, uh, yeah. These are, it's, you know, it's just so much packed full of drama and packed full of, you know, so much potential energy, you know. And so you, you know, every time I play, I'm trying to just release the energy in an artistic way and and kind of conserve energy. And so it's a, uh, it's, it's really a good challenge. So. Yes, um, and thank you very much for being part of this uh, wonderful music. Oh and, man, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, no. world, world famous Edward Wilkerson. Uh, I think it's it's oh, very very nice to have you here today, Ed. Thanks. Well, thanks for having me. I always enjoy you know. It's, I don't look back on stuff that often, but it's, that was uh, really nice to, to kind of look back and brought back some good memories. So. Yes, and Edward Wilkerson is also behind the scene engineer uh, team, uh, engineering team for the Hot House Global. So don't forget that he has this. IT life and the beautiful music, music life as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Ed, and hope to see you uh, again. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm playing actually. I'm playing tomorrow morning a sunrise concert with Aubrey Ra out on the lake. So. Oh, great! Great. Yes. Yeah. Sixty yeah. third Street uh, Beach. Uh, it's at six a.m. tomorrow morning. So I got to go to bed soon. It'll be okay. fun. All right. Thank okay. You. All right. Okay. Thank you. Good All night. Right. Okay, that was Edward Wilkerson in uh, the ESL. Uh, it was one of the pieces that we did back in the 70s and reincarnated a couple times without the saxophone, but this version, uh, we added Edward Wilkerson, this composition, uh, in, in a really, really uh, a great uh, addition to this composition. And, beautiful texture that he creates. And now we have uh, Noriko um, Sugiyama. Um, we're going back to this community endeavor again, and uh, uh, Noriko and Wesley um, talk about this uh, um, national endeavor, uh, national Ginten and Colin is, is there. Hi, everybody. Hi. Yes. Hello. So, um, Noriko-san is is one of the uh, uh, first, very first visiting official legal visiting artist to the Taiko world in Chicago. That she came from Japan under this uh, a visa called P3. It's a performing art visa. Many other genre. Uh, of the of the art world that would also have the peace visa, but not in Taiko world. And Noriko san is the first official uh, Taiko instructor that we invited to discuss a Taiko about eight years ago, I think. Yes. This mm -hmm. Hi. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna before we get into a couple of the. Uh, Jinten uh, venture here, uh, I would like to have a um, little uh, comment from Noriko-san about your experience with uh, Tsukasa Taiko all these years. Hi. えっと、タツ先生にお会いしたのが2008年の夏の三つ輪のパフォーマンスの時でした。で、そこでご挨拶させていただいて、で、その後すぐにお稽古にあの行かせていただいて。
日本にお帰りになるっていう時期で、で、まあ、あの、なんかね、えっと、お稽古に行かせていただいた2週間後ぐらいに、パフォーマンスに連れてっていただいて、<笑>あの、昼間の人がいないのでお願いしますということで、何も曲を知らない状態で、あの、連れてっていただいて、まあ、楽しませていただきました。で、2008年の太鼓レガシーは、あの、客席で拝見したんですけれども、あの、かか影で始まった、覚えてます太鼓レガシー、MCA の。はいはいはい、はい。はい。あれが私、初めて見させていただいた太鼓レガシーだったんですけど、太鼓のコンサートっていうあのイメージを本当に完全に覆して、えー、アートのとても色の強い、大変面白い、興味深いあのコンサートだったことをとてもよく覚えています。Yes, so、um, Sugiyama san, the first time she met、um, our director Tatsu and、um, us was the summer of 2008、um, at the Mitsuwa Festival. And this is just around the time that our founder of Tsukasa Taiko was、um, heading back to Japan.、Um, so we were kind of switching、uh, artistic direction、um, of the group and the organization.、Um, and we were looking for someone who. Uh, was、um, able to kind of play with us. So, so Yama san、um, recalls that、um, my dad had asked her to join us at one of our、um, educational programs that we do、uh, during the daytime、um, as we needed a few、uh, more people.、Uh, so she came with、um, and she says that、uh, she doesn't remember or she, she didn't know any of our songs,、um, but was kind of asked to do things on the fly and was kind of learning our style of performing. And it's a lot of, has a lot to do with improvisation. Um, and so she learned that right.、Uh, and later in the year, she、um, was in the audience side to watch our、uh, MCA Taiko Legacy Showcase. But that particular year, we started with shadow puppetry, as you can recall.、Um, it was one of her p r o d u c t i o n that had this、um, unique, un- unique start to it using,、um, yeah, like the shadows of Hide Sensei at the time. And, So it was very, very atypical of any Taiko productions that she has seen or she was used to. So it was、um, very, very artistic. And she had this impression、um, that, oh, this is, this is something very, very different and very you know,、um, strong. Noriko Sensei, you, you, you came from the Japanese.、Uh, あのアユツマホドン会っていうかコミュニティの太鼓から来られてあのつかさ太鼓ってちょっとスタイル的には違うところがあるじゃないですかでそのことをちょっとお伺いしたいなとはいわ、はい、かりましたえっと日本ではアユツマ太鼓アユツマ太鼓保存会っていう会にあの所属していたんですけど祭り太鼓ですね。外でお祭りの時に、あのー、パフォーマンスをするっていう太鼓をやっていました。で、まず全く違うのが、そのあいつぼ太鼓は一つしか衣装がなくて、すべてのパフォーマンスは全部同じ衣装です。で、つかさ太鼓は、あのー、ステージごとにどころ、どころじゃない、曲ごとに衣装を変えて、あのー、まあ、袴であったり、着物であったり、ものすごくきらびやかな衣装であのステージに立つっていうことがまずまず、えっと、全く私たちのやっていたあの太鼓と違う、ま、祭りとそのステージ太鼓っていうのがまた違うんでしょうけれどもまず違うということとそれからあのとってもつかさ太鼓は、えっと、三味線とか忍笛とかそのお座敷音楽とあのとてもつながりの強い、えー、リズムとか曲とかそれから、まあ、演奏方法とかそういうのが曲が多いんですけれども、まあ、あいつぼ太鼓は本当にお祭り太鼓だったのでどんどんどんどんって打つということがとても多くてそのあたりの、あのー、曲の面白さとかリズムの面白さも随分違うと思います。Yes,、yeah, so Tatsu Sensei asked her.、Um, so Noriko Sensei actually comes from a background of、um, being with a taiko group called Ayutsubo Taiko Hozonkai, Ayutsubo Taiko Preservation Club, where she's from. 
And so she has this background um, in drumming that over 20 years career doing that before she um, came to Chicago to join us and support Skasa Taiko. And so when she was with Ayutsubo, um, they're primarily a festival taiko music based, um, you know, uh, our ensemble. So they do all their rhythmic percussion and what you typically imagine a taiko would be in um, outdoor festivals. And they, she remembers wearing one outfit to do the whole entire, you know, like the duration of the festival. And then you're just playing out uh, in the community sphere. But then when she joined Tsukasa Taiko, she realized that there's a lot of costume changes. We take, we have many, many different hapikos and colors. And um, for per song, we kind of- Yeah, changing per song changing per song, especially right at our biggest um, concert production. And um, there's also this huge tie into Kozashiki music, which is chamber music that comes from um, Tatsen you know, family lineage uh, from Tokyo. So there's shamisen, the three string Japanese lute, and there's, you know, uh, components of dance when we collaborate with Shubukai classical dance troupe. And there's all these different elements and it wasn't just a pure taiko engagement but to create an entire production and a concert stage you're collaborating and you're presenting with all these different you know artists and so it was a very very different experience for her that she kind of dived into head first great so um now we're gonna move on to Wesley and Colin. Wesley is part of our national uh, group, Gintenkai, mm -hmm. and Colin's been in our uh, local Gintenkai mm -hmm. for many years. And so um, we we want to kind of talk about uh, how how do you see our uh, uniqueness as a group mm -hmm. here. Uh, I guess I can comment on that first. Um, yeah, good evening. As Tas Sensei said, I am Wesley Hitomoyi, and I'm the leader of the San Francisco division of the Gintenkai National Project, uh, and I'm a member of Gendu Arts, which is Melody Takata Sensei's group, who you saw earlier in this evening's stream. Um, I guess I could say what's unique about the Gintenkai project is that I guess you could say I come from much the same kind of Taiko background, of course, the North American version as uh, Sugiyama Sensei. We used to do a lot of Matsuri style Taiko, uh, wear only one type of costume. Uh, however, this entire time since we've been working and doing this National Gintenkai Project initiative, I've really, myself and the rest of the people in my group, have really been able to experience um, what more can be done uh, with Taiko and with the collabor putting pairing, excuse me, pairing taiko with other types of instruments and artistic styles. And um, I think that it's a really unique and um, exciting thing that we're doing here um, to show really how much more than just rhythm, rhythmic festival music taiko can be. Mm -hmm. um, as Touch Sensei said earlier, uh, my name is Colin. I'm a part of the local King Ten group. Um, Wesley hit around the spot that what more can we do? We do a lot of great things. I, 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 not, I haven't seen too many type of groups where they venture off into more um, contemporary music like we have. And I feel that we're not, I guess in lack of better words, we're not like a basic taiko group. We, like I said, we do contemporary. We do, um, we, have, we have amazing costumes that we, that we like to show. And not only do we just show it for like one song, we do it for multiple songs sometimes you go in and out we have amazing um uh, features with other musicians as well that i don't see many other groups if not any group do wesley and colin has both been playing with us for you know years since they were like much much younger so you both um definitely grew up you know like in, in our taiko community that we kind of created for ourselves right so do you can you like tell now that you're you're older and you're you know basically both young adults when you look back at it when you see other um you know like taiko groups performances even like on youtube or something like can you tell the difference of what we're learning or experiencing versus 
you know, what's what's kind of like out there, like stereotypically seen? I think uh, one important part that the most obvious difference that I see is that sometimes we use, we make sure we use the space in the music. It's not just what we're hitting. We also try to emphasize in the music, the space between each, I guess, note you could say that we're hitting on the typo drum. And I don't know, it's really hard to <laughs> explain. Since I, since, since the Gintenkai kind of style is something that I've grown up with for uh, the last 10 or 12 years now, mm -hmm. uh, it just feels natural to me. But yes, to, to answer your question directly, yes, I can tell the difference mm -hmm. um, between the two. And there's there's just so many different elements, but... Mm -hmm. it, I, think, I think one of the things that I, I did mention earlier on the program today with Melody is that Melody also had a different kind of a typo presentation mm. you know so so when i met her many years ago i i knew that her understanding of a typo was very different from other type of group mm -hmm. you know they, they, then i think she incorporated all these other things into your typo concert in san francisco so so i think there is a something common about how Melody thought that Taiko needed to go to a different direction and how I grew up going to the different direction uh, was uh, kind of uh, similar in, in, in some ways. Yes, yes. Yes. yes, that's exactly right. In our community concerts, we um, did, did a lot of uh, what Tsukasa Taiko is also doing with their Taiko Legacy show in that we try to incorporate our entire group. Every single one of our students gets a chance to play. It's not just the professionals. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but we also have uh, in our school a uh, Japanese classical dance Nihonbuyo uh, division because Melody Sensei also has uh, training in Japanese classical dance. And so you're exactly right. Those kinds of things that we used to do in our community concerts um, definitely connected straight up together mm -hmm. with you guys. And it's been really great to work together all these years. So yeah. I think we, we, we matched in that way, right? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and before we continue this conversation, we do have a little excerpt mm -hmm. um, of one of the pieces that we learned from Melody Sensei actually when we first started working together. Um, and it's a Taiko piece that really embodies um, or comes from and is rooted in, in dance, classical Japanese dance culture. Um, and this is a studio shoot uh, that Tsukasa Taiko did um, in Chicago. And we think it's one of the earliest kind of production shots that any Taiko group has done here mm -hmm. um, in the city. And it's a rough cut of it. So we'd like to share just a few minutes so you can see what the song looks like. And we'll talk about uh, those aesthetics um, and the relationship to our current music that we're playing now afterwards. Mm -hmm. That was a little short example of the of the clip. <laughs> <laughs> Very short, but but I think like uh, um, the song itself is is we inherited from Melody. That was one yeah. of the first thing that Melody brought to uh, um, Casa Taiko with the yukata and you know all that stuff. And you know, also I think it was a historically important. That was a first studio video. Mm -hmm. with multiple camera and dolly wow. moving along to mm -hmm. shoot yeah. this so so i had this idea of producing the production look like taiko thing and um tsukasa was one of the first ones to go in to do that yeah, and i think that's an important part of kind of the work that we do um is that our presentations really are stage-based theatrical um, you know, art productions, and it's that's a very separate, different approach uh, than Taiko for the festival, for the street, right? In the summertime, th those are very two separate traditions um, that should both be recognized and acknowledged. Um, but we at Skasa, and specifically the National Gidenkai, um, you know, project, 
uh, we are reviving these songs from the 1970s that come from a theater group. Mm -hmm. So all of the props and the inspirations uh, that we have on the MCNC that you can see at the MCA productions uh, for Taiko Legacy and Reduction do come from uh, this you know, artistic approach and we're thinking about theatrical presentations. Um, and so of course that translates um, you know, smoothly to kind of this video production that we were experimenting with at the time. Um, and I think, you know, over the years that it's been fun for me and also uh, for, I hope for you guys to kind of help uh, create and experiment and explore new ways of presenting our pieces that do already inherently incorporate choreography and dance. Um, and, and whether it's thinking about, you know, our transitions um, or playing in different parts, um, switching up, right, the arrangement every time, um, along with costuming. Um, and then like Colin was mentioning, um, applying these pieces into a more contemporary setting. So we do, we have done multiple iterations of these pieces, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with our guests that we had today with um, the classical performing um, artist from Chizuru Sensei to Takane-san to Hyakkyo-san, um, but also with Ed Wilkerson and, you know, Hami Drake and Michael Zering and Jovia and Coco and all of these uh, different um, kind of, uh, or is it stage um, experiences? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, um, it, it's a kind of going back to where what Colin was saying a few minutes ago um, in Kyoto too, that we, we do contemporary applications to um, these older songs, but if you look at what's going on in, in Japan right now for what, what the kids are doing today with the taiko, we are much, much more traditional in, in aesthetics. Mm -hmm. you know? Because I think yes. the Japanese youngsters are going towards more of the percussive, mm -hmm. buoyant, acrobatic things more and more today. Like mm -hmm. I just watched this video uh, by Tao um, Tao was a split from a group called Shidara who came to Tsukasa Taiko many, many moons ago to teach the song. Yeah. But what they are doing is completely like a, a, a showbiz kind of a Taiko, whereas in mm -hmm. we um, do this modern revision, but still have this really traditional aesthetics to it. In, in the, I love that part of our organization. Yeah, and I, I do think it's important to be able to differentiate contemporary application um, ver as, as a way or being able to apply this work in a contemporary uh, setting while stay, still maintaining this traditional aesthetic. Uh, and this, specifically, we're talking about musicality, right, and, and the choreography as part of that. Um, and that that is very different from um, doing a westernized kind of pop rendition right, um, of the production, you know, playing taiko with pop music or playing taiko with pop band or using shamisen like a guitar, you know, that you're using these traditional instruments um, and using the taiko drum, uh, but playing musically like a western drum set. And that these are very two different applications and, you know, hopefully uh, our young kids like Mariko and Kailani who joined us today are you know, slowly learning as they grow up, you know, as part of the um, and, and understanding, you know, you being able to understand, um, you know, musically, but also through experience that what we're playing is so much different, um, you know, that it's 2020, but we're able to kind of still keep our traditional roots going. I think Tsukasa Taiko, um, along with Wesley and Melody and Sizuke and New Arts, we're really, really good at elevating our art history to, um, into something very, very tasteful and if it's very unique and one of a kind, especially in the Midwest, you know, um, Asian American um, arts community, which is much, much smaller than like the West Coast or the East Coast. But mm -hmm. our approach to how we present our music and our art form is just so um, particular and very, very um, eclectic, but in this very carefully thought out, choreographed way that all traces back to, you know, like a legacy and like a lineage that we wouldn't have otherwise with working, living, uh, traditional musicians in Japan, but as well as 
um, amazing, amazing Western musicians like in Chicago, in San Francisco, in, you know, New York or anywhere else in the world. Um, but yeah, like that's one of my favorite parts is that the, the elevated stages that we took, we took what was just a ordinary title from 2000, you know, one or 2002. Um, and it's kind of, it's kind of incredible where we are 20 years later. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and um, before we leave you all this evening, um, we would like to share a little bit um, of our uh, long suite, um, or an excerpt of a long suite called Hayama. Um, and this uh, is a production that we did at the Museum of Contemporary Art Chicago for our Taiko Legacy show. Um, mm -hmm. And it does feature all of the things we've been talking about from costume change um, to this kind of energetic and fast playing, uh, but still keeping uh, very musically grounded um, presentation. So we hope you enjoy a little bit of that. And it features all of us that you're seeing here. <laughs> right. Yes, indeed. And more. <laughs>
And then, ladies and gentlemen, that was a Hayama Sweet. Um, something to note, in that song we had a large costume change and my mother was actually behind the shoji mats. So <laughs> you have like one group going from one side and the exact same group caught the other end. But when they caught the other end, they're wearing a completely different costume. And so that was uh, very interesting. And it took us a while to nail down that transition, but it was um, a very, a very interesting change in set and change in scenery and how our costumes um, completely changed and, and transition to a new, a di to a new, the next song. Mm. Great! Wow, this three-hour special flies out. It's that's already ended. <laughs> I, I, I would like to thank uh, all the guests from Tokyo. Uh, first of all, Chizuru Kineo Sensei and you know Takane San, Umeya Takane and Fukuhara Hyakyo Sensei. They are all great collaborators of the Taiko Legacy and are, uh, you know, uh, the creative music people, Jovia Armstrong, Michael Zerang, Edward Wilkerson, and uh, um, all these uh, people behind the scene at the Hot House Global. And, and, and I, I have to say it again that Hot House Global really gave us an opportunity to look at our history and look at our legacy through this live casting. Uh, so I am very, very thankful. And you know, Taiko Legacy is going to happen in December. So keep your eyes on stream.airmw.org. Mm -hmm. And we want to give a huge shout out to our engineers who's behind the scenes, Bajran and Bea. Thank you so, so, so Thank much. You. Yes, and we'd also like to thank um, our guests from Tsukasa Taiko, um, of course, Wesley Domoi and Colin Wong and uh, Sugiyama-san, um, and Randy West, uh, mm -hmm. as Maybe. well as Nicole Sumida, um, and her kids are students, uh, Mariko and Kaiwani. And um, Melody Takata from Genju. Yes, of course. Was she in Chicago or San Francisco tonight? She was in Chicago from Chicago. She's in Chicago. She's okay. part of our Chicago yeah. team this evening. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so very, thank you. Very, yeah, a vital part of the Taiko legacy, Genju Arts. Yeah. So thank you all for tuning in to our three hour special. Um, and we will leave you this evening uh, with the rest of the Hayama Suite uh, production. And you will be able to see uh, the specific scene change, costume change scene uh, that Colin was mentioning. And so we hope you enjoy. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next time on stream.airmw.org. Thank you. Thank you. See you next time.